Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. In this podcast, we'll get to the core of the UN's Sustainable Development Goals, what they aim to achieve, and the leadership role played by the EU in implementing them. Want to know more? Stay with us. Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs as they're commonly known. There's 17 of them, but what are they about? They're basically an urgent call for action by all countries developed and developing to navigate humanity towards greater well-being and to forge a new relationship between sustainability and development. These 17 goals and the broader 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, of which they form the core, were adopted by the United Nations in 2015 as a follow-up to the Millennium Development Goals and the 2012 Rio Plus 20 Summit. Let's listen to the words of the then Secretary General of the UN, Ban Ki-moon, when the agenda was adopted. The agenda you are adopting today advances the goals of the Charter. It embodies the aspirations of people everywhere for lives of peace, security and the dignity on a healthy planet. These targets, which are to be attained by 2030, were the result of a decade-long debate and effort involving NGOs, private sector entities, local authorities and many other stakeholders in global and national consultations to come up with a real blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. The premises were crystal clear from the beginning. We are destroying our planet and there's no planet B. We are all on the same boat, so we all need to act together, and we must adopt a comprehensive approach. What this means is that we need to simultaneously address the multiple causes and consequences of environmental depletion and social inequalities by developing synergies and managing unavoidable trade-offs between the SDGs. That's right. So what's different this time compared to previous efforts and goals? Well, unlike the eight Millennium Development Goals adopted at the turn of the century, the 17 SDGs have a universal dimension, moving away from the traditional donor-recipient approach to really acting together and leaving no one behind. Their scope has also broadened from focusing mainly on health and poverty issues in developing countries to including strategies that improve health and education, reduce inequalities and spur economic growth. All these while tackling climate change and working to preserve our oceans and forests. Assisted by the UN, which provides guidelines and support, it's down to national governments to implement the targets and report their progress towards achieving them. Here's Eric Pichon from the European Parliamentary Research Service. Every year, UN member states meet to discuss progress on the goals, successes and challenges. The next meeting will take place in July this year. And it will be the opportunity to discuss how to build back better from COVID. And also to focus on goals like uh, quality education, life on land, life below water and partnerships to achieve the goals. And if the coronavirus pandemic wasn't disruptive enough, Russia's brutal war on Ukraine is further disrupting global progress towards several sustainable development goals, notably zero hunger, good health and peace justice and strong institutions. Although the more optimistic analysts believe this may actually trigger progress on other goals, such as the transition to clean energy, industrial innovation and working in partnership to achieve the goals. Every four years, world leaders meet to define priority actions to accelerate the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. During the first summit in 2019, they acknowledged slow progress in some of the goals and committed to speeding up delivery in the following 10 years. Leaders will have a new chance to review progress when they meet for the second SDG summit in September next year. Now, what are the main challenges? Stay with us. Our world is so interconnected that policy and institutional coherence are key to turning the SDGs into reality. Therefore, revitalizing global partnerships for sustainable development is already at the core of the 2030 Agenda. And the need for greater coherence does not only apply to UN structures and national governments. It extends to everyone – private sector, 
citizens, financial organizations, NGOs, everyone involved in this global effort. But things are not so simple. Well, they rarely are, are they? Some analysts argue that the capitalist model of growth and consumption makes coherence between SDGs challenging and creates unsolvable tensions, notably between poverty reduction goals and the protection of our natural resources. So in the short term, some countries cannot avoid making trade-offs to achieve progress on some SDGs, but reaching all 17 goals at global level will require a real change of mindset and a joint effort by the international community. And here, the European Union is playing a leading role. It was deeply involved in drafting the SDGs and it has committed to implementing them in all its policies, setting an example for the rest of the world. They are reflected in the European Green Deal, the European Pillar of Social Rights, the Post-Pandemic Recovery Plan and the Framework for Coordination of Member States' Economic Policies, to name just a few. Here's the European Commissioner for Economic Affairs, Paolo Gentiloni. At the Commission, we are fully aware of the necessity uh, of, to implement the, these goals in their entirety. The European Green Deal makes clear our ambition to build a modern, resource-efficient, competitive economy. Climate and environmental challenges can be addressed and turned into opportunities while making the transition just and inclusive for all. And this ambition lies at the earth of our recovery plan. This is why we have also begun to integrate the SDGs in our economic policy coordination framework. The European Parliament, on its side, has been a driving force for implementation of the goals, and it regularly assesses EU commitments on achieving them. So how well are we doing at EU level? Here is Agnieszka Viduto from the European Parliamentary Research Service. Well, the greatest advances have been made on fostering peace and personal security, access to justice and trust in institutions. However, significant progress has also been achieved on reducing poverty and social exclusion, on the economy and the labor market, on clean and affordable energy and on innovation and infrastructure. The EU is also well on track to achieve the goals on health and well-being, life below water and gender equality. On a less positive note, I also have to say that there hasn't been any progress on water and sanitation and we've even moved away from the targets related to life on land. We must note, however, that figures on poverty are available only up to 2019 and therefore do not take into account the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. And progress on energy is strongly influenced by the drastic cuts in energy consumption in 2020. That's why during the last plenary session in June, the Parliament called for the creation of an inter-institutional task force to coordinate efforts to deliver the SDGs and stressed the need to urgently address the impact of both the pandemic and Russia's war on Ukraine on implementation of the goals. Barry Andrews chairs the SDG Alliance, an informal group of like-minded MEPs from different committees and political groups pushing for real change. The COVID-19 pandemic has had an undeniably devastating impact on the implementation and delivery of the Sustainable Development Goals. In fact, a recent SDSN report confirmed that no progress has been made towards achieving the SDGs at all over the past two years. And what is even more worrying is that the full-scale impact of the ongoing pandemic remains to be seen. The latest data is out of date and the EU's recently published Eurostat report on the achievement of the SDGs only partially reflects the consequences of the pandemic and the war in Ukraine. Any future reports with more up-to-date data are likely to present very frightening findings. We'll certainly keep an eye on new findings and statistics. Yes, we will. But in the meantime, you can already check out the many papers on the SDGs on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.